Hello everyone, I'm Mark and in today's video I'm going to begin to show you what just may be the most powerful and effective sales formula ever. And yes, it is an unbelievable huge claim in a world today filled with hype. This sales formula is directly responsible for transforming businesses like these businesses and these businesses into businesses like this and this and this and these and yes even these it's also responsible for transforming salesmen like this and like this into high paying powerful executives like these and we're going to use a fancy pants chalkboard to talk about all <laughs> actually no uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to have some plain simple talk I'm going to draw on a chalkboard, show you some elements. We're going to get right into this. But first, what I want to share with you is what you got in your first email. In that email, entitled, There's an Amazing Secret to Finding More Clients, also had the subheadline of Closing More Sales is Easier Than You Think. You see, what we're going to reveal to you isn't about what you can buy to do it for you. What it is about is knowledge. And that knowledge, we're going to freely share that with you. So you don't have to work any harder and you don't have to spend any more money. We stated, this is all without cost or obligation to you. We're going to do for you in advance what the web design, marketing, and reputation management companies promised to do, and they failed. Before we get into the sales formula and how to apply it and the methodologies, what we do want to do is talk to you about how you're doing it now. You see, the companies that you're using to do this with, they don't know the content. They don't know the sales formula. What they do know is technology, and I'm going to share a formula with you on that first, and then we're going to get into the actual sales formula. What happens is that this content, this what, this information that they need in order to apply the method or the technology in order for it to generate or create new business or return business for you doesn't work because they don't have the content. So what happens is, you always have these excuses. They have some sort of unforeseen event and it's just gonna take longer. The search engines changed. I'm gonna debunk that one right now. The search engines don't change. They absolutely modify in advance, but they don't change. These search engines, Google, Yahoo, Bing, they all work with each other and they all work with each other in a, a transactional code, which means Google works on a code, Bing works on a different code or algorithm. Yahoo works on a separate algorithm, but they all have a code, it's programming code, that interchanges with each other so that they can communicate with each other and exchange data. And that doesn't change. So whatever you put on Google will go on Bing, and whatever you put on Bing will go on Google, and as long as what you're putting on there is something that they'll accept. What these marketing companies are telling you is that, hey, Google's no longer accepting this. No, it's not that Google's not accepting it. Google didn't accept it to begin with, however your site might have gotten ranked or your social media might have gotten ranked, then Google turns around and they, they don't do it instantly. What they'll do is they'll go ahead and they'll index you and then they'll send the data algorithm robots through your site to determine two important factors, user friendliness and relevancy. And if your site isn't both user friendly or relevant, then your site's not gonna rank. What happens is these companies, they start doing what's called backlinks and that's great, but if your site is backlinking to my site and your site's about accounting, for example, and my site's not about accounting, my site's about marketing. Can I market accounting businesses? Yes, that might be a tad bit of relevance. Is my site about accounting? And the answer is no. A backlink, unless it's a testimonial from your site to my site, is going to then turn around and counterproduce a ranking for me which means that if you have an, an accounting site and you're posting a link onto my marketing site, it's hurting my relevancy and I don't want it. Initially, it's gonna give me link juice. It's gonna move me from page six to page two or even the bottom page one for that matter. But what's gonna happen is the robots are gonna go through there and they're gonna find out that that information is not relevant to my site and they're gonna demote me back down to page six and you're not gonna know why and they're gonna block me from getting to page two until I remove that link. Purely and simply, they're charging you for this 
brilliant technology and developing a web page and, and all this stuff can look good. Google doesn't care about what your site looks like. That's not important to Google. It might be important to your client, and I agree with that. But what Google does care about is user friendliness. If your site looks good but is not user friendly according to Google, you'll temporarily get ranked and then you'll get knocked down and all the SEO and everything else that these guys are doing, if they're doing it the same way, you're not gonna get ranked. So we're gonna move over to the chalkboard and on the chalkboard, I'm gonna show you the content that you need to know, the formula that they need to know in order for you to get the results that you wanna get. You need to know the content, they need to know the how, and you also need to know the method to apply it because they don't know the method to apply it. They know the how, they know how to create a nice web page, but they don't know how to apply your content to that web page properly to result in sales. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. We're going to move over to the next email. This is where we reveal the first element, building loyalty. And with building loyalty is exactly where your sales begin, whether it's to a current prospect or a current client the building loyalty element should be the very first thing that you do however if you've already got a client of course and you haven't done this element there's never a time where you can't do it there's methods or strategies that you can use to go back into your existing clientele and start to build that loyalty in 1949 there was an ad man, an advertiser by the name of David Ogilvy. And David Ogilvy approached small businesses for advertising. He approached this small business and he had an interesting way of advertising. And that was for the small business to give value, to give something to the prospects before you ask them to buy. He had a difficult time convincing them that this is what they should do. It'll never work, they said. So eventually he convinced them to take a chance. He developed this advertisement for the local newspaper, did exactly that. It gave the value before it ever asked them to buy or look at anything. Here's a preview of what that ad was. In this advertisement, what you'll notice, aside from the fact that there was over 1,600 words printed in this newspaper, this advertisement was everything about questions, things that people wanted to know. Notice they're circled here. People wanted to know about that particular service, business, or product, and basically debunked it. It took something that was possibly very difficult and simplified it for the viewers. And I might note that within inside this advertisement, there was never any asking for a sale. There was only content, value, information, so that people would have a little bit more peace of mind regarding this particular product or service. At the bottom of this ad, you'll see here that copies of this advertisement and in pamphlet form are available upon request. Now in these days, what people had to do was they had to mail a request to this address and get a pamphlet regarding these questions. This particular advertisement ran over a few years. As you see here, that small company was called Merrill Lynch. And Merrill Lynch went from being a small business to one of the biggest businesses in the country in a few short years due to advertisements like these. Now why am I saying this? Well, first off, let me say that this is not advertising. Uh, we're not talking about advertising. What we're talking about is applying the sales formula in this advertising that eventually what it did was transform a small business into a huge business. And some of the people that took this formula would be people like Zig Ziglar. So he says, you can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Let's move over to the chalkboard and let me explain to you this formula and how it applies to your current marketing or reputation management companies and developers. In every relationship that leads to a sale, you must have the what, which is the content. That content has to have steps or elements in it. If it didn't, what you would be able to do is walk up to someone and say, hey, I'm in this business, you wanna buy my product. It doesn't work you have to have some elements involved in order to lead the individual to be a prospect and then to transform them into a client. And I might say that these elements don't have to be perfect, but they do have to be there. If you skip them, what'll happen is you'll cause a reluctancy in a prospect to become a client or a current client to want to be a repeat client. So these elements must be there to cause what's called intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is where you increase the prospect's desire or the client's desire 
to want to do business with you. In other words, they have to like you. They've got to want to do business with you because your product actually is a byproduct. What they're trying to determine, especially in today's time, is your intrinsic value. So when you first meet someone and they say, hey, I'm Joe and I'm the greatest salesman and I work for the greatest company, you want to buy our product? The answer is no. The reason why the answer is no is because they can have the greatest product in the world. The issue becomes that it doesn't matter how great your product is if I can't get you to help me make this product work for me. So there we have to turn around and decide what are they providing for benefits for us in order to ensure to us not only is their product going to work, but are they going to work for us to help us to get that product to work so that we receive the benefits that they're promoting. And we do that by establishing the intrinsic value, the elements of the sale. Here we're going to talk about the first content or the elements. And let's just say that that has a value of 20. Okay. And we're going to say that we have the total value of five elements and it's going to come out to 100. When you're talking to a marketing company, a web development company or a reputation management company, anybody that's going to promote your business uh, using technology, which is the method, they'll ask you questions. The thing about it is, is that you have to have this content. You are the one that, that has to say, the first thing that we need to do is this. The second thing that we need to do is this. And the third thing that we need to do is this. Fourth thing we need to do is this. And fifth thing we need to, need to do is this. Because we know that by doing these things creates success. It creates more sales and it creates repeat sales. The huge mistake, the business owners, we are going to these marketing companies, development companies, and we are asking them what we should do. And what they can provide for us is the how. They can provide the how, but they can't provide the what. You have to say, well, listen, the first thing I need to do is I need to build loyalty. How do I do it? They don't know. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to debunk that right now. The majority, and I do mean the majority, of business owners that are in the marketing business, in the reputation management business, and even the uh, web development business, these are business owners that never were successful in any other business before. I'm going to say that again. Management reputation companies, web development companies, and marketing company business owners have never been successful in other businesses before. But before you hire them and you ask them, what businesses have you owned? They'll lie to you most of the time. And the reason being is they'll talk about the businesses that they worked in that somebody else owned but that most likely they, they got fired from those or fell out of the sales part of it because they just couldn't make it. There's a big reason is because when they come to you and they say, okay, we're in the marketing business or we're in the, the reputation management business. When they come to you, it's very easily done that they can dazzle you with the brilliance of what it is that they do. And I'm going to tell you, if you've got a marketing company that knows how to create this great looking website that's got pictures here and writing there and something else going on here in this spot. It all looks great. The pictures are beautiful, the whole nine yards. Does it perfect these elements? And the answer is no. And you can't do it, so of course they can dazzle you. Do you necessarily need this web page? Maybe not. Maybe so. And then they start selling you on the, all these other things that you should or shouldn't do. And what happens is, is when you don't get the return on your money, when this thing doesn't come out and do what it thought it would do for you, like increase sales, get you clients, they blame it on you. And the reason why they blame it on you is, well, you didn't buy this other thing that would do it. Or you didn't do this other thing that we suggested to you. But they only wanted $2,000 for this, $5,000 for that, and something else, the other thing. Okay. Now I'm going to show you here a little bit later on the, how you can do this stuff. But the point is that these guys, they're just developing web pages. They really don't care if you make any money or not because they've got a way out. They're a web developer or they're a marketing company. They put your Facebook together. But is your Facebook making you any money? Chances are it's not. Why? Because they don't know how to make it money. They don't know the what that needs to go in there in order for this to make money for you. What they do know how to do is go in there and set up a web page. They have these, these people out of school. These guys, they come straight out of school as developers. They know how to write code. They know how to design a web page. They know how to make everything look fancy and pretty and everything else. And that's all great. But does it sell? And the answer is no. The answer is no because you are the responsible one for having these elements in place. If you have these elements 
what happens is they now can come in and put the house right here. They can say, okay, you've got this, so we'll put this how or this, this method here to get to this. And okay, now you've got that, we'll put this method here to get to this. But you have to know where you're going in order for them to get you there. They can't tell you how to get there. All they can do is design this thing up. If you do not have the content to taking to the next level here, you'll never sell anything on the internet. You'll be broke or dead broke trying to do it. Well, I don't really want to talk about this a whole lot, but what I do want to talk about is what Zig Ziglar did. There's a formula in your sales. I'm not selling the idea that you've got to have a web page and I'm going to tell you how to do it and what to do. That's not what I'm doing here. What we're doing here is we're going to show you how you need to have this formula in place so that when you do design a web page and when you do have a Facebook design or whatever marketing method that it does the sales for you. So the equals here is the method and the first part of the sales, this one right here is loyalty building and that's what we're going to talk about because without the loyalty building what what happens is you're not establishing the value what you're doing is you're saying hey I, I'm great salesman I'm great company I'm great do you want to buy it and they don't know how you do business and this is the first thing that we want to we want to talk about because it's the first thing that they're trying to decide aside from what's this guy want so if I walk up to you and say hey I'm Mark and, and I'm from this marketing company oh he wants to sell me something okay so you gotta debunk that and the way to do that is to give them something show them that you want to give them something first it's essential because now you are totally separate it, the direction is different and that's why we, what we want to do here is we want to take you out of the rat race and change your formula a little bit so now you're in the direction of giving to receive rather than getting to give what you have to know here is that this businessman that you're approaching he showed up at eight or nine o'clock in the morning to his his office and by 11 o'clock, he's had 20 people say, I just need, can you do uh, their take, 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 take. And he's tired of hearing the taking. So by the time he gets to you at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, he don't even want to talk to you. But what do we try to do as a salesman? Oh, well, such and such, the credibility thing, uh, you know, referred me to you. So I'm good like they are. Well, he's going to find out. So how do you do that? Well, the first element, what we do is we provide loyalty. We provide a way for them to want to do business with us to begin with by showing them that we're not the same as the last guy that they were just you know, addressed by. Like I said, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. Some of them you're probably already doing or may not be doing at all. And so what we want to do is show you each element, but we want to show you different ways within the element that you can do. What happens is, is that you'll get more effectiveness. So even if you're doing it poorly, the key factor here is that you're doing this element. Once you are doing these elements, then you can improve upon them. The more you improve upon them, the more success that you'll receive because of it. What's happening is that you don't have these elements in your sales formula right now, and that's why you're, you're possibly struggling, maybe even just, you know, uh, enough to get by barely paying the bills or possibly on the verge of bankruptcy but I assure you that what you'll find out is if you're doing well it's because you have these elements in play it's because you're using them now you may be using them poorly we'll find out if you use the technology of today to work with these elements what will happen is you'll become more user friendly for your prospect or your client and they'll want to do business with you because they'll totally see that you're doing business a different way. Loyalty building expresses or establishes something. What is it that your business expresses or establishes? Ask yourself that question. And then what is it that your business should be expressing or establishing? Most commonly or typically a sales formula that is totally incorrect is your business is expressing a how how big your company is how long you've been in business how good you do what it is that you do so in summary what you're actually doing here with by using a formula like this you're trying to express or establish of how much value your company is and that's where the problem comes in you see these business owners they don't care how big or how long or how good you are that's not what they're looking for what they're looking for is how you benefit them. See, it's not about you. 
That's what all this stuff was. This stuff is all about you, okay? And when you're talking to a prospect or a potential client, what you should be talking about is the benefits for them. When you demonstrate that your business is set up to fulfill the benefits for them, and you show them the benefits for them to do business with you, now it's about them. And you've got to make that loyalty building has got to be all about them, not about you. They don't care about you yet. They're not even interested in you. What gets them interested in you is how you run your business according to them. And when you do this effectively, what happens is it tells them how big your business is. It tells them how long you've been around, your wisdom, your knowledge. It tells them how good you are. See, you telling them doesn't do any good. You're right according to you. But them telling you turns them into a client. You telling them doesn't turn them into a client. So I'm going to tell you something right now. The method that you tell them tells them how big you are, how long you've been around, how good you are. The method that you use tells them that. The better the method tells them, the better company you are. You won't have to tell them how great you are. They'll tell you. So we're going to talk about the methods here in which we can express or establish their value to us. And then we're going to talk about how this leads into the sales formula, how you use it in your approach with uh, your prospects or your clients, immediately picking them in from the defense to the offense so that they will want to want to know more about doing business with you. Loyalty cards are those cards that you've seen on the table at the restaurant or in your hair salon or something like that that says, hey, tell us how we're doing. And those are good, but they only have a certain amount of effectiveness. And what you're wanting to do is, is increase the percentage of effectiveness. That's what I was saying is you can do it poorly and you're still doing it. But when you increase the method that you're using, the more results you're going to get because the people are going to be aware of what you're doing. So if, if you've got a loyalty card sitting on a desk or a table, most people see that as being a complaint form. And so the loyalty cards, their purpose is to tell the business owner how they're doing in regards to you. It's a, it's a means of communication. It's the least effective out there. And, and many times what happens is, is most of these companies, what they're doing is they're taking a loyalty card and also putting a, some sort of a discount coupon on it and everything else. So they don't even really get the good idea of what a loyalty card is. Now, companies like Waze and where they say, hey, listen, come in five times and you'll get the six time free. Or All right, I guess those are okay, but you know, there's, there's not really a requirement for a salesman there. The company Subway spends a lot of money on advertising to be all over the television and the radio uh, to get you in to begin with. And they don't have salesmen inside there that are introduce you to the company and what they do and, and how they do it and ask you to buy anything. You're going in with the intention of already buying something. You don't need a representative inside Burger King to convince you that you, that you want to buy a hamburger. You're there to buy a hamburger or, or you wouldn't have walked in because you already know by advertisement what they sell. Loyalty cards have been widely misused. The big companies don't use them in that fashion. They'll use them in the form of letter. Typically what will happen is if you visited or bought or somehow made a connection with a particular business, they'll send you out a, a letter welcoming you or thanking you for visiting their establishment. And in that letter, they'll say if you have any questions or concern, how they may be of help to you. This is the same thing that you want to do. Now, do you want to send a letter out to every prospect? Maybe, maybe not. They're, it's more effective than using that the loyalty card itself by sending that welcoming letter. Uh, but do you have a, a strategy or is there a method put in play there in order for you to collect that information? Chances are not. And the reason being is because what we're talking about is getting more sales here, inclusive but not limited to repeat clients. And when you're getting more sales for your business or prospects for your business, the last thing you want to do is to ask them to do things. Give me your email address and your phone number and we'll send you this text message. And that's another one too that's widely misused and, and terribly least effective. So I'm not saying that text, text messaging is a bad thing or something that you shouldn't do. By all means, send out a text message and do the loyalty. Welcome, thank you. If you have any questions or concerns, here's a manner in which you can contact us if there's anything that we can do to further assist you. The 
problem with that text message is that they're going to delete it. Typically, the companies abuse that privilege. They start sending out the coupons and discounts and buy, 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 buy through a text message. People are uh, reluctant to give out their email address, their phone numbers, and everything else because of that. It's been widely abused, and most know that, gee, once I give you my number, you're going to start sending me all this stuff that I don't want. In other words, you haven't built the loyalty yet, or you just sent one thing, and all of a sudden you're sending out buy, 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 and these people... If they want to buy, they'll ask you. I'm, I'm going to show you something here it's from Microsoft Business for Small and Mid-Sized Companies. And Jeff Wurio made a mention here about repeat business. And what I want to point out here to you is it's where it says the prospects only listen to your pitch when they're ready to buy or make a change. It means you have to constantly be on the front to find those new prospects that are ready to make a switch. And again, they're not giving you a how here. They're just telling you a what. If you have a method to get yourself in front of the prospects and when they are ready to buy they can contact you wouldn't that be so much easier than timing and that's the problem with text messages text messages are timing for who timing for you maybe but not timing for them you can't possibly know when these people are going to be ready to want to do business with you or to do business with you so the only thing you can do is blast them with ads the problem is you'll annihilate yourself from them wanting to do business with you because of how you're doing it your method. We're going to show you something that is congruent with today's technology. This is how this stuff was invented or designed to begin with to use. And big businesses did it because they knew that they used this formula and they used this technology that they would always be in the customer's hand or the prospect's hands. And when the prospect was ready to do business, it would be there. Wouldn't you like to have your prospect or your customer? No that you're there, that you're doing great business, seeing you as that big company with longevity and, and credibility, now they're interested because they're looking for that change. Uh, they're having a problem with their existing company. The previous salesman, in order to get the deal, oh yeah, we do this, no oh, yeah, we do that, and everything else, they've already been through it, just like the direction of walking and say, hi, I'm the greatest there is. So now they're looking for someone else, someone else that has demonstrated and demonstrated is the, is the key word here, demonstrated the value of them first. With all the things that we've discussed as far as changing the direction from do you want to buy to and that how valuable we are to how valuable they are and the benefits that they would get to doing business with us, a mobile app suffices to handle all that stuff in a congruent way that is user-friendly, using it in the most effective and efficient manner that there is available today. And the reason being is that you're giving something to the client or the prospect in advance and you're showing them, you're demonstrating to them how valuable they are. So, so having a mobile app, let's, just, let's discuss what a mobile app is and what it isn't first. It's just a piece of software that when they go to your website, gets downloaded on your phone. Okay, But the, the misuse of it is, is what most marketing companies do. If you go to your Facebook account, that'll give you a good idea here. In the bottom right hand corner here, it'll show you who's using mobile and who's not. Okay, so there's 8 out of 18 currently using mobile uh, on Facebook. So it's fair to say about 49% people currently right now in the middle of the day are using Facebook. It means that right about half of them are using their phones to visualize whatever business they're transacting. The key to a mobile app is, is to only have the information on there that is pertinent to the prospect or the buyer at the time. How do you determine that? You determine that by asking your receptionist. It's the easiest way to do it. Ask your receptionist. The majority of the calls that come in, what are those calls about? The calls are always going to be about what your hours are to schedule an appointment or to change a scheduled appointment, a uh, question about a product or a service that they already bought, which is a technical question, and or to get the location or directions, depending on whether you're a retail facility or not. So what does that tell you on what your app should have in it? What if you could have something that you could give to your customers, put the loyalty right within the app? We would like to know what we can do to make your experience with our company better so we can improve our service. This is something that they can put their opinion, suggestion, uh, comments in, submit it and they don't have to worry about 
uh, somebody getting back to them or, or somebody bothering them with a reply. They're not looking for a reply. This is a one-way street here. Loyalty building is when someone can feel secure and just say, this is what's on my mind about your company. I like this, I don't like this, um, and I think you ought to or shouldn't do uh, something. Uh, that's a one-way street. Now, this is, if they have a sales question or a service question, then they can click on that button. Uh, they can give their opinions and, and comments and suggestions here. They can check your hours here. They can schedule an appointment here. They can uh, talk to technical support here. They can get the location or the directions here. And if they want to buy something or want to know uh, uh, more about what it is that they, they want to buy or what you're selling, they can click there. What better way to give them everything that they're going to ask for if they were to call you? Now, let's talk about the sales direction of this. Instead of approaching somebody and say, hi, I'm such and such, and we do this, and we're so great at that, and we're the biggest in the, in the business for the other thing, and we can do all these things, how about approaching them saying, hi, I'm Mark, I work for this software company, and this software saved business owners like yourself tens of thousands of dollars a year. It cuts out employment overhead and reduces your overall expenses by 30 or 40 percent. How we know this is to be true is because we give something to our clients to give us input, give us some guidance and directions on how to be the best company available in the market and, and how to give a, a user-friendly experience with our company so that our company has adjusted themselves to work better for you. And the benefits of having or doing business with our company is that you'll be able to say what's on your mind at any given point in time without being concerned about any kind of uh, direct response. However, if you do have a complaint or a problem, we also have a button here. And what we would like to do is we'd like to give you our app free so that you can review our company and see how we do business. And uh, you can check our hours here. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, this will go directly into the sales. So all you have to do is go into the drop-down menu and pick my name out, Mark, and let them know that I talked to you. If you have technical questions, you can ask the technical person, and they'll send it directly back into your email. However, if you'd like to visit our establishment and, and see our location, the, the information is going to be there for you to do that. Once you get a chance to review our product and have questions or whatever, or, or you want to make a comment or suggestion about the way I approached you, or this gives you the opportunity to say so there. If I can have your card, if you'll take my app and download that into your phone, you'll always have it with you. To schedule an appointment and we can discuss doing business further together and, and how we can help you to uh, accomplish your goals. So what happens is it changes the direction uh, that you're giving them something, something that they can, they, they now see of, of value and they get a chance to look you over. And they see that you just gave them something and it shows them that you do know how to do business. You don't have to tell them that you know how to do business. and this is a business that's congruent. Listen, they can go right to their phone. They don't have to do anything for you in order to do business with you. And that's the key is don't ask, don't say, hey, listen, you want to do business with us? You're going to have to mail me in a letter. That was 1940s. Today, you want to do business with us? Let me give you something so that you can do business with them. What would you need or what do we need the software to do that the current software doesn't do? That business owner can ask the technician, will your software do this? Yes, this particular version will do this, and it'll also do the other things, blah, blah, blah. See our FAQs page, um, and he can give a link for that, that, you, that this business owner can now look at the FAQs page and see all the, all the other things that everybody else had questions about. You see? So, so now you're extending a courtesy, a value, a, a, something to these people that is part of the sales formula that increases the amount of sales and the amount of repeat sales. Because you can go back to your existing customers and say, you know, I know that calling into the secretary has been tough for you because sometimes the salesman doesn't get the message and sometimes, the, or if you call the salesman, you know, it's two days before he sees the technician in order to get the question over to you. You can now directly contact the technician and they'll e email you back as soon as possible or direct you to the proper link to get all your questions answered. So, so now you're, in, you're, you're systemizing your communications with these, with these prospects or with these clients 
to where now, oh wow, that's much better. And you're you're listening to their their potential problems or, or current problems and you're making the changes because the loyalty card says, listen, you know, we would like you to make this change because it's 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 this is too hard. So listen, I want to be thorough with you and give you everything that you need because we're going to go into some of these other elements. And today was basically the foundation which we're going to build on to show you how you can use and what you should use and why you should use things uh, to increase your sales without spending any more money. What we'll do here is we'll show you what you shouldn't do. And it's not that you shouldn't do it, but you shouldn't do it for this purpose, and that is to get more sales. So the one thing that you should not do is when the marketing company or website design company, when they, they tell you that you need to be mobile ready. Now, that sounds a little funny because I just got done showing you how um, there's you know at least 50% of the people or 49% of the people uh, on the websites uh, that are that are reviewing things from mobile phones. Let's talk about what mobile ready actually is. Mobile ready is taking your existing site so that when someone is looking at your site on a smaller screen, your site adjusts for that. They'll see it on the screen, uh, so it won't look all garbled and and mixed around. It'll come out nice and decent. The easy way to tell if a site is mobile ready is just grab a hold of the screen and reduce the size. So what's happening is this site's adjusting. See how it's adjusting here? based on being able to see it from a mobile phone. Here's the problem with it, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna size it down some more here so you can really see what, what I'm talking about. Again, when someone's calling uh, or they're looking at your site, they're looking because they wanna see what your hours are, schedule an appointment, uh, they have a question about your products, whatever, and now they have to try to fish around on their phone all through this site. And this doesn't work because it's not giving them exactly what they need or what they're looking for. So with a mobile with a mobile site or a mobile ready site, watch this, it's really cool. So what this is, it's a site that if you put in a website address, what it'll do is it'll show you the mobile version of the uh, of the website that you're looking at. And what it should have again is is the directions and, and a, uh, a way to, to give input, the loyalty a way to give some input, comments, and suggestions, uh, technical support, anything that you you need without looking and, and, and looking through the site to try to find it yourself from a mobile phone. So the product that we designed uh, will work on any mobile phone as long as it is a smartphone of some sort. And so what you'll find here is that you won't see our whole site through here. If you want to contact the sales department, you click on this button. If you want to contact the service department, you click on the service department button. And here is a way of contacting the sales department. You put your first name in, whatever, blah, blah, from your mobile phone, and you push send. So this, this is what's important because now you're getting to the specific department uh, for the purpose of why you're getting going on uh, pulling up that app to begin with. Here you can make, and this is what I would uh, like you to do. I'd like you to pull this up on your phone leverage-marketing.net, so L-E-V-E-R-A-G-E -E hyphen or dash marketing, M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G dot net at your earliest convenience. And you, now you have an opportunity to go in here and submit a form letting us know how we're doing so that we know how to improve our business for you, to give you a pleasurable experience in doing business with us. This tells us what we need to change or, or to... Uh, uh, adjust so that uh, your experience with us is a good experience. It's not going to ask you for an email address. It's not going to ask you for any personal information. It's just going to ask you uh, what it is that you want to tell us and give you an opportunity to tell us. But the neat thing about this is, is that um, you know if you're doing business with us, you can now just simply click on our app on your phone. Uh, and click on this technical support button and put in your information, put, you know, put in your information, whatever product you're talking about and what the message is, a best time to call you back um, and the best data to call you back if we need to call you. 
uh, and or just simply send you a, a text message or, or an email message rather. And this way, you're directly talking to a technician about a specific problem or, uh, or uh, concern that you have and they're directly responding back to you and it's not going through the salesman, it's not going through the operator, it's not going through anyone else except for the one that can really answer the question that you have. And therefore, it, 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 you know, most of these companies, when you do business with them, they say, okay, somewhere between 24 and 72 hours, they'll get back to you and whatever. Listen, you're sitting there working on this particular thing right now, and, you know, 72 hours may not work for you. Uh, now it would work because you're working on it now. Nice thing about it is, is if this, this is something that can be answered uh, by sending you a, uh, an email back, say, okay, listen, I have an FAQ sheet, and on this FAQ sheet, it directly uh, addresses the question that you have and gives the specific answer. However, if that answer doesn't work for you, send us, uh, send us a message and we'll call you, okay? So what happens is, is now you can do it on your time and not our time. So we might have got the message at 2 o'clock, but by 4 o'clock or 4.30, you're in another meeting, and here we are calling. Do you want to stop your meeting? And that's a sales meeting, okay? You're, you're doing business. You're going to make money. Do you want to stop your meeting because you need to answer, you need to talk to our technical support because of a problem that you need to fix? And the answer is no. So this way, the benefit for you is that you can, you can now... Um, a, as the business owner or even the salesman address this issue at the appropriate time but now you've got the answer and if you miss the call you, you're not going to miss the knowledge because it's there for you okay so um, honestly spending you know uh, two three four five thousand dollars to get your site mobile ready only to make your site do this here let me show you we can shrink the site down and everything will adjust See how nicely everything adjusts there? Everything adjusts for you. We can still go into whatever. Um, so it's it's still there if we want to do that. Okay, but that's not why uh, people are contacting you, uh, typically speaking. They might have found you on the internet and they're looking uh, looking for that stuff, but the mobile app, see how, see how nice that makes an adjustment there? Okay, that's mobile ready, but it doesn't take me as a as a prospect or a client it doesn't take me to the pages that i need i've got a hunt and peck for them so mobile ready does not do what that mobile app does okay and to spend you know two three four five thousand dollars to get your site mobile ready is great but not for this purpose of, of getting prospects and and closing your sales they need to have direct contact with the correct departments knowing that um you've put those things in play for them uh, last thing anybody wants to do is get on the phone and hold for 30 minutes here and 45 minutes there. We haven't got the time. I don't have the time. You don't have the time. Even if your, you know, your, your site design or your web design, even if it looks great and whatever, and even if it is mobile ready, um, it is not effective or efficient in closing sales for you. Uh, let me write this out real quick. Okay. And, and that is because it, it has all your information on it that you're asking these people to try to find what it is that they're looking for. And people's uh, attention span is very short in today's time, um, especially if the design is, is not user friendly because it was done by a technician and not by uh, a sales force um, for these particular areas that you needed to have done, the what wasn't outlaid, they don't know. So guess what? These things aren't in a place where uh, your web designer has put them so that people can find this information very quickly. It's usually scattered all over the place and um, or you're not mobile ready to begin with. So being mobile ready and spending up to $5,000 to get your current site mobile ready is not necessary for you to get more sales. So if you're being approached by someone like that, stop. It's not going to do any good. You got to have it user friendly. And so the sales direction is, hi, I'm Mark, and our company prides itself on listening to uh, our employees, listening to our uh, prospects, listening to our service technicians, and listening to our uh, cl clients. And so what happens is that with their input, uh, we're able now to adjust our company to become uh, the best company we could possibly be for you. So what we've done was we've created something for you 
to be able to check and see what our hours are, to schedule appointment. And I'm not going to keep on going back over through that stuff. But the point is that uh, we're giving something to you, for you. It's a benefit to you so that anything that you want to know, need to know, and need to find or whatever have you is easy and at your fingertips. Don't hand them a card and say, here, go to our site and look for it. They're not going to do it. How many business cards do you have in your wallet right now? You'll have the app 19 inches away from your hand at any given point in time because that's where your phone is. So this is why we took the time and we developed WP MobiSoft. MobiSoft gives you exactly that at um, a severely reduced uh, price versus getting your site mobile ready. And even if you have your site mobile ready, it's not going to provide uh, for this uh, uh, for what it is that your loyalty building along with all the other things that we're going to talk about over the next few days is going to accomplish. The other huge issue that I want to address about having a, uh, a mobile app is uh, something like that. Okay, and number three here you'll see we have off-site. And what does off-site mean? Well, that means that if you have a mobile app already and most likely you paid a lot of money for it and also most likely it's being hosted somewhere that's not being hosted on your site where MobiSoft, WP MobiSoft is being hosted directly on your site and the dangers of hosting your app off of your site well I'll show you although this site offers the uh, the phone number to give someone a call um, and place an order uh, that's great but let's let's talk about the mobile ready part of it okay see they got home bestsellers occasions they, they got so many things to go through here that it's not giving them these elements here that we talked about which I mean it's okay but what it's really doing is saying it's prompting to call and the whole one of the whole purposes of this is to make it easy for the prospect or the client to find on this app without having to call. Uh, let's just say they want to place an order or delivery department or their hours or something like that uh, which are not here. So basically what they're doing is saying okay well on the holidays you can go to this one, best sellers you can go to this one. This is not a, a shopping venue from a mobile phone. It's not to say that you can't have a shopping venue but that should be up underneath here where you can go to all those different places. Here should be specifically defined these elements that are involved in, in the sales process. What I'm wanting more so to point out is that if the site doesn't have an on-site mobile app, like this one here for example, okay, so what's happening is people on their cell phones aren't going to scroll through all this to try to figure out what they can do. Okay, the phone number is there, that's great. So what they're going to do is they're going to click off of this and they're going to go to the next one. So what happens is you've got what's called a bounce rate, okay? And if, you're, if your site is being redirected or it, if you're giving a mobile app out that does not directly relate to your site, these people are going to bounce off of this. Now, it doesn't really seem to mean a whole lot, but if you're paying somebody to do your SEO and somebody to do your marketing or reputation management company, and most likely you haven't even heard of bounce rate, but if you go to Google and you ask Google what a bounce rate means, it means that how many people go to your site and do not stay there for any length of time. And the way they calculate that out is out by average minutes. Two minutes and 30 seconds is when it starts the timer. So if I'm on this site for less than two minutes and 30 seconds, it tells Google one of two things. Either this isn't what I was looking for, and I typed in the keyword, if you recall, flowers. Either that wasn't what I was looking for, or the site wasn't user friendly. And so Google turns around and they basically slap your site and say, okay, well listen, you are not as relevant or user friendly as we thought you were and we're going to move you down on the page. Then your site is now getting slapped because of the visibility. You're either going to lose your rankings or you'll never achieve the rankings that you're trying to pay for and yet your uh, so-called gurus out there with web development, reputation management, whatever, uh, they don't know none the wiser. That's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. If you do have an internal IT guy or you want to do this yourself, down at the bottom here, we've made a provision to where you can simply get the, the app for yourself and construct it yourself based on the guidelines that we're giving to you. However, for a limited time, we're going to offer this out that we'll do it because you are a part of a group 
or an association or an organization like the Chambers of Commerce, we have made a special deal for you folks, a limited offer for us to do it. The people that are, that are involved in these uh, organizations uh, to give them a little ad advantage in increasing their sales. The important thing to know is that whether you're using an app or not, what you do need to do is have a loyalty built in there that is not by the incentivizing, giving away coupons and discounts and everything else too. It needs to be a separate loyalty building, whether it's a card or a mailer or an app, it must have some sort of loyalty building so that you can change the directions in the sales to take your small business or medium-sized business to becoming a big business and somebody uh, to reconcile with. Thank you very much. Have a great day. It was a pleasure.